You are listening to the Next Play Podcast, the playbook for high-performing leaders who want to exceed their full potential. From walking on the Ole Miss football team at 5'7", 150 pounds, and earning a full D1 scholarship, to coaching thousands around the world and working with massive organizations like IBM, I've learned countless lessons that I'll be sharing right here with you. Join me as I interview some of the most successful people so you too can learn how to focus on always moving forward by deciding, planning, and executing on the next play. This is Richie Contartesi with the Next Play Podcast, and today we have a very special guest for you today. His name is Cody Schill, and he's been in direct sales for over 16 years, has been, been an executive since he was 29 years old, which is really, really impressive. He scaled, is, has worked with some amazing people, but has led the way to scale a company from nine to a hundred plus million dollars. Really, really impressive. And he did that because he's really, really good, not only at leadership, but recruiting and surrounding himself with the right people. And so today I'm really, really excited to announce uh, Cody, so thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, what's up, man? Dude, thanks yeah. for having me. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So <laughs> so you've worked your way all the way up to VP of sales mm-hmm. for Encore. Yep. Really, really powerful and good company. So yep. walk me through. Let's just start from the beginning. How did sure. you get into sales? Yeah, so I mean, I, uh, I mean, even going further back than when I started in sales, right? I, when I was 19 years old, I went on a more, I just graduated high school went on a Mormon mission for like two years. Oh, really? Yep. And uh, went for two years. I went out to the Midwest and started knocking doors as a 19 year old kid. Um, middle of nowhere, Kansas, uh, kind of gained a skill. And when I got home from a mission, I went down to school down in Utah, uh, which is kind of the Mecca for door to door sales. And uh, got down there. And my first summer down there, I had some friends that went out. They sold alarms or pest control, satellite, something like that. And I had friends making 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand uh, dollars in four months. Wow! And so I saw selling it, alarms, selling okay. alarms. Yep, door to door, like ADT like, AD or whatever. It was like Apex, but, okay, which okay. is Vivint now, right? Okay. They're the big one. The Pinnacle was another big one. Okay. Um, but I uh, saw friends doing it, and uh, ha- I met a, a guy um, actually at church one day. Told me he had gone out and made over a hundred thousand um, dollars as a he was probably 23, 24 year old kid, right? Wow. Um, and so I saw what he did. I saw what a lot of my friends did, and I said, okay, like I can go and do this for a summer. My goal at the time was simply just to you know go out, do it for a summer, make good money, and not have to work and just keep going to school. Um, I went out that first summer, made something like forty, fifty thousand uh, dollars. Did pretty well. Well, I was, you know, 22, 23 years old. In a it? summer? Uh, yeah, that year. Yeah, four months. Yeah, so it's a grind. You go out. I literally drove all my stuff all the way across the country. Um, had an apartment waiting out there for me, and I went and I knocked in the hood in Chicago for <laughs> for four months. Really? Yep. Wow, interesting. <laughs> hear it, you, know, you hear gunshots go off. You yeah. Know, you see some crazy stuff there, but um, just kind of put my head down and went to work, knocking on doors um, all day, uh, six days a week, took Sundays off. And uh, I had a goal that summer that I was going to go out and I was going to sell 100 accounts um, because the owners of the company told me, hey, if you sell 100, we'll move you into a leadership role. Wow. So I was like, cool, I'm going to do that. So I sold about 130. Um, so I exceeded my goal. Uh, they moved me into a leadership role and I've been able to kind of be in sales leadership ever since. So, wow. So, yeah. so, um, so how old were you when you did, when you? I guys turned 23 that summer, I think. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And then um, but I was 22 when, when I started. You were tw- and when you, were you in uh, regular sales all the way until you're 29 in some sort of leadership capacity? Pretty much, yeah. I okay. was. So uh, you're still doing sales. Knocking doors. Oh yeah. All, all. I mean, pretty. So it started off for the first like six years. It was pretty much just all, you know, door to door summer sales. Yeah. Um, where I would go someplace for the summer for four months and just go knock. Right. Uh, once I hit. I think I was 28 um, when I moved over into solar. That became more of a year-round thing. And even then, I was still knocking a lot of doors. I started off all self-gen, just went out and knocked doors, generated leads. I moved out to Boston, actually, to do that. Um, Yeah, just banging on doors. And uh, about, I did that for about six months with Vivint. Um, I didn't have intentions of being in Boston forever. I had two kids from previous marriage. It was kind of a temporary, like, thing that I, you know, I didn't want to move away from my kids long term. Makes and sense. so I uh, went out there just for a few months, loved it, didn't really love 
the organization I was working with. Mm. Um, I moved back uh, to the West Coast, and I, shortly thereafter, I met a guy, uh, his name is Dan Larkin, uh, who had just started a company called Evolve Solar. Um, he, he got a partnership with Solar City. He had never sold solar before, and he was like, hey, we just need some help on teaching people how to sell solar. And so, uh, you know, they, I think I went out to California, helped did, do some training, whatever it was. And then a couple weeks later, Evolve sold their first deal in October of 2013. And then fast forward, you know, I kind of joined the company right around that time. And then fast forward six months later, we became like the fourth or fifth largest solar company in the country. Wow. Um, I moved into an executive role right around that time. And then we were able to kind of grow and been kind of been in executive roles ever since. So, so walk, let's walk me through yeah. some of the things that you did once you got in that executive role, right? Because mm -hmm. what I want to focus on with you yeah. is leadership. Sure. Development of your people, retention mm -hmm. of your people. It's tough, man. 1099s, totally. like that's a very... Especially, yeah, 1099s can definitely be hard. Yeah. It's either it's either complacency or they're just not engaged and it's over. Like even, totally. you know, it's like, and then you have your all-star. So I want to, sure. I want to walk through with you. Um, kind of your your evolution of leadership from where you are now. Some of the things that maybe you still used from when you were younger. Like walk yeah. me through your 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 timeline as an executive. What you've learned and dude, I've learned a ton. Like so when I so when I became an executive, honestly, like I was green. Like yeah. I I knew how to run a sales team, right? And but I but do you agree, real quick. I don't want to interrupt, but no, do you agree good. with that? Like just you're maybe an exception, but a lot of salespeople like. They just did well in sales, so then they put them in a leadership role, and it's like a disaster. Oh, they, that's totally what happens, right? We, okay. <laughs> I still see it today in our organization, right? Yeah. Like, you know, we'll, one of our regional, like, hey, this guy's awesome. He's doing really well. Let's make him a leader, you know? And it's like, well, that can work, but... It works, I mean, in your scenario, but it's yeah. very rare. It's not, mm -hmm. like, super yeah. common that it for, works. For some people, it does. Other, it doesn't. Like, in the direct sales industry, oftentimes what you see, especially when you're talking about, like, the summer sales programs... Oftentimes what they do is they, they just want to get buy-in from the guys that sold over 100. Yeah. And so they know they've got other friends that are probably like-minded, very similar people. And their goal is to like make as many people managers as possible, right? Uh, and then have them get their friends. Uh, they know that probably 40 to 50% of them can really lead. Yeah. Uh, and so they just give them the role. And by the time the next summer rolls around, they don't always, they're not always in a leadership role. Sometimes they're like, hey, you know what? I don't really want to do this, but... I'm gonna go join this team over here, and I'm gonna bring my guys on that I recruited. So that's oftentimes what 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 uh, companies are trying to do. Like you know, f in our our world, right? We're all we're we're not summer sales, right? We're year round, and so we have to do everything we can to really like train, develop, and get somebody into a position where they can lead a team. Yeah. And so we don't want to just make somebody a manager just because like they've been with us for three months, right? And they they've been doing well. Right, that just doesn't make sense to us. We want to make, and sometimes it does. Sometimes we're, or sometimes we're in a position where it's like, hey, we don't have anybody else. We've been trying to hire somebody. Let's put somebody in this role, and we're going to kind of see how they do. But in the background, we're going to, you know, probably still be looking around. So right. we've had situations like that too, just out of necessity. But for the most part, we strive to really train, develop, and get them to a point where they can. And so, you know, walk me through that. Yeah. Like how do you, like that's 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 a big thing, right? Yeah. Especially in a VP position. How do I get people how do we make leaders right yeah. like how do we develop leaders what's your kind of Honestly, philosophy or yeah, process right? to me the, the the biggest thing is creating a system um, and creating a process that you know we found like if, a track for them to follow yeah like, like a track for them to follow and then an exact like almost a daily schedule with exact like habits activities things that they have to be doing every day yeah and if they can do those we know that that will breed success and so uh, what we've, especially the last few months, actually, we've we've kind of looked at the organization. It's okay, we're we're doing really well, uh, but you know we you know we're going to do you know a lot of revenue this year. We want to get to a point where we're doing over a billion dollars in revenue. Let's go. Um, you know, it's going to take some time, right? We'll probably we're probably. But if few, you went ten to a hundred, you'd yeah. go hundred to a billion. Yeah, it's the same can. thing. Exactly. Yeah. No, a little, we, bit, little bit more challenging. A little, little more challenging. More leadership. More yeah. people. You know, more <laughs> developing. More programs. Right. But yeah. like at the end of the day, it's all the same thing. Yeah. And so uh, what we've tried to do the last, you know, what are we, five months into the year now, the last five months, we've been super heavily focused on, you know, building better training systems and better processes for our leadership. So two weeks that. ago, we had a, um, a retreat up in Utah with all of our regionals. And we sat down and we said, okay, 
every one of you has things that are awesome that you do, um, but we want to bring a lot more unity to what we are doing. And so we want to take what the regional of the East Coast and the regional of the Midwest and the Southwest and the Northwest and all these guys are doing and bring it all together and create one encore process that we know is proven and works. And as we do that, we're able to, you know, you, you just plug people into a system and then you hold them accountable to that system. And as they're going through the system, it's going to help develop them, train them, motivate them, motivate their people, and it'll help them become better. And have you have you already developed that the system itself, or is that something you're building out right now? Uh, we're like ninety five percent there, yeah. So we like, what are your, I, like? What's your philosophy around that system? Like what as what, far as what like like what what are like some of the steps, or what are some of the the pieces of it? Yeah. So a lot of it comes down. So in in direct sales specifically, like also right now, my my focus and energy mostly goes. To, so we have a setter setter closer model, right? Yeah. So most of my energy goes towards right now the setter program. And so anytime you're dealing with, uh, you know, most of the guys we hire, we hire through Indeed. We have, you know, a few thousand applicants come through every month. We hire, you know, 75-ish, 60 to 75 people every single week um, across the company. So we've got a lot of people coming through, right? And so what we see though- and these are all salespeople. All salespeople, just going out, banging on doors and setting appointments. And so what we see is some of the leadership they are great at taking a person that has, you know, a 20 year old kid that's never done anything more than hourly jobs like, you know, working at a restaurant or Walmart or whatever, right? Taking them and then moving them through and helping them become a successful rep. There's some that are great at it and others that aren't and their attrition is really high. And right. so we've wanted to really strive to take control of that attrition and it really comes down to the process they bring them through, um, you know, right at the recruiting gate. So when they first walk through the door to, you know, talk to them, we have a pretty cool recruiting process that we bring everybody to that's proven, um, that like was that. developed by one of uh, the guys I work with, uh, Ryan Roach. He nice. developed that almost fully on his own. Um, and so uh, we, we have a group interview, they, they come in, they uh, listen to the presentation, that the whole purpose of it is to sell them on the opportunity here, right? Then from there, uh, we have an orientation meeting that's on Fridays that then walks, that just sells them further on why they should be there. And the whole purpose is to get them to sign docs, you know, become, you know, start working with Encore. Yeah. Then typically they're gonna start the following Monday and it starts with that training process. And it's like very like systematic, uh, you know, micromanaged almost like you need to go through this exact thing and as if we can get people through that um, we and they can be successful at the end we have to have help them have success week one right yeah. as long as they have success mm. week one so important um, then they are they typically will stay for at least a couple months right. if we don't get success in week one then they usually will fall off pretty quickly um, and so, you know, it's door-to-door -door sales. It's not, you know, the, they're not coming on with salaries and all this stuff. We do, we know we do pay them hourly for the first little bit, right? Um, just to help get them through the training process. I like that. But, a, lot, a lot don't do that. Yeah, no, we, we do. We found that it, it is hard, right? Like it's not something that most figure out right away. Right. Some people do. Some people, you know, they go out and they knock three doors and they start killing it. Most people don't. Right. And so in order to retain people through at least the first few weeks and help get them through that, yeah. um, we pay hourly. I like that. So um, we found that. It shows that they're, they're, making a, they're making a commitment, right? Mm -hmm. And so you guys are kind of matching that on the front end to say, hey, we're going to train you, we're going to teach you everything, and we're going to make sure you're compensated while you're on ramping. Exactly. And then at that yeah. point, you got to, you know, you got to produce. Exactly. Right? Yep. Yep. And it, it's, it like trails that. off over four weeks, right? So they have yeah. four weeks of hourly pay. They're going to have like small little... Uh, they have re some requirements in order to hit it. We're not just going to give it to them for free. Otherwise, people sometimes will just, you know, sit in their car or whatever. Right. Um, but as long as they're hitting the certain metrics, then they're going to get paid that. So, Love that, dude. Yeah. So it Love kind of that. pushes them to get to a certain point. Once they get to that point, the hourly falls off. And then we typically, as long as they make it through that and they're hitting it, then typically we'll have a producing rep. So the whole goal behind it is to just get people you know, cross that finish line. And it starts with a very systematic process of like bringing them through training and helping them get there. So how, the training that you put them through, is it live or is it all like pre-recorded? Like what have you found to be the be the most beneficial? Good question. So there's some stuff that's that I found to be most beneficial that can just be recorded, right? Like the really simple stuff, like, you know, going into the CRM and how to enter a lead, right? right? Right. How to schedule the appointment, just making that recorded. Here you go, look at it anytime you want to. Typically, you know, throughout the training process, they will have them also like enter a fake one just so they do it once and figure it out. 
but just having that stuff there stored, recorded, they can do it. Having other pieces recorded is really valuable as well, but I found that by doing it live in person, they can ask questions that helps right. them grasp it better. Um, I found that typically works better. So, so for their for their onboarding, it does include some online stuff, and then they also mm-hmm. have a in person yep. type yep. training. Yep. Yeah, we're we're actually completely re in, in about a month. I'm actually going to completely redo all of our online training stuff. Uh, but we do have like you know pitch you know pe- showing people on the door pitching, having like welcome videos and oh, a bunch nice. of stuff. But we're going to kind of re- refilm all that stuff. Like live some, videos. All yeah, we'll have some. Well, it won't be like. We can walking help up you to the house that, across the street, and knock on the yeah. door, and I'll be like, "Yeah, we can to help you." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's usually like someone's wife, like there. Like, we go to their house, and like she's the customer, and got it. Then we just kind of film it from. We usually have a couple That's of cameras, cool, one inside, yeah. one outside, and try to do it professionally. So now, do you also do the training, and then do you also have like your managers? I mean, that's so many people starting. Mm-hmm. Do managers do like ride alongs? Do you have or do you have yeah. other reps? Do, like how do you Yeah, so traditionally what it's been, we're actually moving into kind of a new phase of the business then trying to use technology to be able to, to do that. So um, so we traditionally, yes, there's gonna be we try not to have more than five people per office start per week. That's usually kind of the sweet spot because you don't want to have too many people to be able to shadow and train, right? Because if you've yeah, got like, like if we have an off, we had an office last week that had 23 people start on Monday, right? And to me, I'm like, well, like I'd be pulling my hair out, you know, having, because you'd have to have like seven deep following you on the doors, right? Um, and, uh, the, and I've the, done that before, but like, really? yeah, you have to just like oh, start Oh, so you on, do it and you have them follow you. Definitely. Because that would be nuts to have someone shadow with every person. That would yeah, be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Usually, okay. And there will be some of that where they're going to get shadowed too. But usually, the, at least the way that I would train is I'll say, okay, watch me on a few doors. I'll watch you on a few doors. Um, but if I've got a group of seven, right, I'm going to say, okay, you six, go knock. Um, get your teeth kicked in a little bit. Get the marbles out of your <laughs> mouth, right? And then get I'm going gonna, 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 gonna to be back behind you, and I'll follow you here in the next couple hours um, as I go through each one. Uh, typically, we don't like that, though, right? So no more than five you can you can lean on the other people in the office that have been there for a while to kind of help get them through the training process so it's not not always all on the manager yeah um so that's kind of how it's always traditionally been we actually are moving in now to uh and this will give a plug for for a company we work with it's called zero um so they're a ai company and oh, nice. everything they do it's actually it's it helps our business a ton so um it helps so one of the things that we try to preach is that leaders lead from the front they go out, they knock on doors, they're the top performers. And so they, the managers they, in every office are also yep, top performers. Yeah, they're, they're leading the way, right? Here you go, let's go do this. I'm the top performer, you guys are all going to follow. And that's something we really try to champion as an organization. Um, but what we find is that when they've got people starting every week and they've got four or five people every week that they're trying to get through the training process, a lot of times they get bogged down and they focus they focus a lot on training people, right? Right. Um, and so their personal production kind of dives. And so what Ciro does is every time a rep goes out on the door, just like when they clock in, right? They clock in, we use an app called T-Sheets, it's through QuickBooks, they clock in for their hourly, they also hit record. Um, and it goes into door-to-door mode. So they just put their phone in their pocket and they go out and start knocking. And through AI, it listens to every conversation that they have and it separates it out not only by each individual conversation, but by se- it actually books market se- section by section. So then the manager or anybody else in a leadership role in the organization can go in and listen to that conversation and be able to provide live feedback. Um, wow. And so all of your coaching can be done digitally. So instead of you know having to spend you know, half your week knocking with other people, we've, uh, we're now helping to develop this app where they, our managers, we literally just rolled it live to the East Coast yesterday. Uh, all of our managers can jump on, listen, provide feedback just kind of in the morning. Hey, I saw you do this. I heard you do this. They just record themselves. It sends it right at that bookmark spot um, so they know where they were talking about. It gives them that live feedback. Or if a rep is out in the field and they're like, hey, listen to, this, listen to my next pitch, you know, I'm struggling getting past this objection or this area, and you can provide specific feedback right then and there. So, have you ever heard of Gong? It's the same thing. Okay, their, I was just gonna say it's their the, goal is to take out Gong. Got um, it. Yeah, so I got work it. I work okay. closely with their with their CEO uh, to help develop uh, the, the this we're one of their first solar partners. They've done it with Pest Control and some other got companies. It. So, I'm helping them to kind of develop it out. Uh, but he wants to take out Gong. So nice. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. 
That's yeah. a pretty big. Uh, it's but a that's pretty cool, big task. man. They're a pretty big companies. So. Uh, do they also do like um, video calls, just like Gong does, like Zoom and stuff like that? They don't do video at this point. Okay. Um, right now, it's just recording, and they're mainly focusing in the direct sales industry. They they have aspirations for it to go across yeah. all industries and kind of develop, but. They're kind of in their beginning phases. Those softwares are super powerful. They are. Dude, that's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, it's, I mean, talk about saving time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you have these new reps coming in. Now we can coach them on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, the, so we have your managers that are also managing new hires and the people that are there. Like how many, if I'm a manager, how many people do I typically have that you know that I'm yeah it, it kind of varies right so we'll have offices more in their infancy stages that are gonna have maybe five to ten people max yeah right um, and then we'll have offices like our Raleigh North Carolina office I think last I heard they're at like 25 or 30 wow. um, door knockers but they also have a there's like three team leads so Actually, the team leads kind of they help out them. with the you know with training with getting people to the area stuff like that so let's talk about developing talent obviously sure. that's something that is very widely talked about today mm-hmm. um, and I know your your organization is really big not just on developing their skills mm-hmm. as a sales rep but yeah. personal development as a yeah. whole walk me through kind of your philosophy of that and yeah. what you've implemented to be able to do that yeah so we we try to once again go back to a systematic approach and uh, it you know I, I can't be there present with every single sales rep, right? I think at the moment right now, we have somewhere over 200 um, door knockers plus around 100 closers. So I can't be there with all of them, okay? Um, And I'll never be able to do that. I try to get around to each office once a year, but I don't get a lot of FaceTime other than maybe like Zoom calls or company calls, right? And so uh, we have two programs that we use as kind of our leadership development programs. And that's kind of the benchmark of if we know someone should be moving up in the company or not. Um, So we call it our caliber program. Um, and then we also have another one called our Caliber Fit program. So Caliber, uh, basically there's like five levels they can earn as they're here at Encore, right? So each one has specific metrics that they need to hit from a work standpoint, but it also has them reading books, audio programs, it's got like Tony Robbins and you know, a bunch, there's like usually four or five books for every level. Um, and they have to go through all those books. They have to give a book report in front of their team and kind of say, this is what I learned. This is what I'm, you know, um, this is what I'm applying into my life right now. And as they go through those, um, they tip, you know typically they can earn their first level within about a month or so. But then from there, it's going to get harder and harder. Right. So um, at the end of each one, they we we incentivize them. They've got prizes they can earn. You know, the first one we call it Scout. You know, they can they get a an iPad and usually it's some company swag that's attached to each one. Um, as they go through it, there's you know bigger and bigger prizes. The last one, they earn a MacBook Pro and engraved watch. You know, they earn some cool stuff. It's nice. Uh, but the whole purpose of it is to help develop and grow them. Uh, right. Help them, you know, introduce ideas to them that they never would have had. You know, never would have like been introduced to in the past. Right. Right. A lot of these people are 20 year old kids, like I said, and uh, you know, not a lot of life experience yet. And so it's hoping. And our hope is to be able to. Uh, introduce an idea that could hopefully you know help pave the rest of their life um, uh, but at the same time um, it, you know a lot of these books that they're reading are leadership books and they're developing themselves to become future leaders within the organization gotcha. so you know kind of a two-pronged approach there yeah so um, so that's, that's the first program then we've got another one called caliber fit I don't know if you ever heard of 75 hard yeah um, Andy for sales thing cool. so I, I went through it for the the 75 hard the first time I think three years, two or three years ago, I can't remember. Um, And it's something that I always wanted to try and bring to everybody at Encore. Um, The thing that I realized, because we tried to do it once a couple years ago, is that it was probably a little bit above where most people were at, right? Most people hadn't done much with physical fitness, hadn't done much. And so getting them to go from like nothing to two days for 75 days straight with having a (laughs) cheat meal was tough, right? So we decided at the beginning of this year that we're going to uh, to what you know call it our Caliber Fit program, um, you know, and you know they have to work out once a day. They have to be reading a Caliber book. They have to be doing you know a few different you know a few different things. I think it's five things. It's very similar. Um, but the goal behind it is not only to help their physical fitness, but to help their mental fitness and help them to create mental toughness. And that's ultimately what programs like that do. Yeah. Like when I went through 75 hard, it was great, right? I looked great at the end of it. I was stoked on, you know, the results I got from a physical standpoint, 
But what really changed in me was not what I looked like physically, but the way I thought mentally yeah. and how I could show up in the rest of life. Mm. And so, um, you know, it really, especially in door to door sales, it's not easy, right? It's hard. You get your teeth kicked in. Like I said earlier, you're knocking doors, people are slamming doors in your face. They don't want to talk to you and you have to get somebody from, oh my gosh, another door to door guy, especially another door to door solar guy to, yeah, I want to sit down and meet with them. And right. it takes us, uh, it takes mental toughness to do that. And so what we've seen is the people that uh, go through that program as well, it's really helped prime and develop them to become future leaders in the organization as well. I love it. So, so. You, not, you not only have the leadership and personal development training, mm -hmm. but you also have like, hey, like here's mental fitness training, mm -hmm. or physical and mental fitness yep. training. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then once again, we throw prizes in there for all of them. If they finish the Caliber Fit one, they get 500 bucks, and then there's like, there's swag and stuff along the way they get. Like, I think the, the is it seventy five days? Seventy five. Or go ahead. The last one's what? Yeah, last one they get like Lululemon workout gear. They get some nicer stuff, right? But, um, but yeah, they. Uh, I don't remember what you asked a second ago, but. Yeah. So so it's seventy five days. Seventy five. Yeah, yeah. Seventy five <laughs> days. Um, you know, they have to work out once a day for forty five minutes. Read a read one of our books in the, from the Caliber program. Uh, drink a gallon of water. Uh, pick a diet and stick to it. Um, can't remember what else we threw in there, but we do also give them Sundays off. So they get one day off so they can go through and, you know, kind of clear their head and get back to it. So they work six days a week. So most, uh, some do. It, it, it depends. Um, we encourage five, but a lot of them work six or seven. So how do you keep, we'll, we'll talk about the, the, let's talk about the reps first on this and then we'll move to the leaders. We were, okay. I know we were talking about this, but how do you keep, how do you keep your, your people motivated the, that's the without saying the, be motivated yeah totally so yeah we were talking <laughs> about this before right like when you get we, we've had a guy work for us in the past and we were uh he one time we were in one of our meetings and we were talking about an office that was struggling he's like man someone just got to go out there and motivate them and like i heard him say that and it's kind of rolled my eyes i was like that's your like grand advice go out and motivate them right. you know like motivation's cool and there's a place for it right just like there is with with most things in life but Ultimately, motivation doesn't get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so our goal is to get people committed to a certain way of life, committed to improving themselves, getting better, and focused on what their job is, right? So we create a lot of systems, once again, you know, from a rep level. One of the biggest things we focus on is uh, group accountability. People tip, they, they're not always very accountable to themselves, but they are accountable to their, to their peers. Of course. Yeah. And so nobody wants to be embarrassed in front of their peers. Right. And so, you know, in their team meetings every week, they're setting goals. We, we typically try to champion commitments versus goals, like what you're actually going to do versus like, you know, versus what you're just stretching to do. Right. Um, and so you're committed to hitting, you know, five pitch leads in a week. Right. And when you don't hit that, you have to say in front of the group, like, I didn't do that. Right. And then from there, we also, uh, you know, we have, you know, we use GroupMe to our advantage where they're talking about what people's performances are in GroupMe. Uh, we also, uh, you know, one of the hardest things with door to door, especially new people just starting out, is just physically getting out. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, driving out to your area, getting out of the car. You'll often hear in the, in the direct sales world, uh, the hardest door of the day is your own car door. Right. Once you get out of that one you can succeed, right? You can, you can make it happen. But a lot of people get there and they'll sit there for hours. Like I've fallen victim to it myself over the years, right? You get really? there and you're just like, oh my gosh, I just, I, I had a really hard day yesterday. It's pouring rain right now. Um, I, you know, had this happen in my personal life and you start getting in your head, right? Um, but what we found is that by championing a few different things, one, I think car groups where you're getting out there and doing it together, right? So you drive to an area, you get out together, um, it holds everybody accountable, right? You get dropped off, you are like, well, I'm here, so I'm gonna work, right? All right. Um, or another option is just getting people, getting people out to their area, right? Driving out there together, meeting at a central location, and then everybody kind of splits up from there. But by creating accountability through stuff like that, that's super important. The other thing that, the, um, to me, uh, I, I think is probably one of the most powerful things, and one of our, our regionals does a great job of this. He finds out, he always finds out, uh, and I guess I can say they because it's him and you know, his counterparts, they find out what makes people tick, right? Like, what's your ultimate goal? What do you want to do in life? There you go. I want to yeah. own a restaurant or I want to, you know, be, you know, I want to have a nonprofit. I want to do this, whatever it is, right? right? Whatever their goal is. And you say, okay, 
they talk about it in every meeting, uh, but then they talk about what they have to do to get there, right? And so, you know, for someone starting off, if it's someone new, new to sales, and you say, okay, I wanna make $100,000 this year. Okay, awesome. Most people, they set a goal, and then they sit there and they focus on the goal, right? Which is good, right? It's good to focus and to like kind of secret believe thing is it. BS. Yeah, so yeah that's totally. Fine. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's good to have some visualization. But at the end of the day, oh, I'm the gonna visual... write a check to myself and then yeah, I... and then I'm not gonna work. And right? it'll yeah. happen. <laughs> and I'm just gonna think so about it. So dumb. Dude. Like, there's some value in it to like focus on like the positive, For sure. right? But like at the end of the day, the thing that gets you there is figuring out, okay, I you know what what are your numbers? So like, if I need to make a hundred thousand dollars this year. Um, what action do I have to take along the way to get myself there? And you have to break it down to what the daily habits are. And you know, if I want to, I'll use working out as an example, right? Like I want to have 12% body fat, that's my goal. Um, what daily habits, what things can I do for the next three months to get myself there? Well, I know if I take out processed sugars, I don't drink soda, I don't, yeah. you know, whatever, right? You list out those things. These are the daily habits. I'm going to work out for 60 minutes a day. I'm going to do blah, 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 right? And you list all those things and you just simply check those things off every day. You know that those habits are going to get you there. Right. Same thing with making money. Same thing with working here at Encore. You have to just lay out what the habits are and then just do those every day and then just check it off. I literally have a planner in, you know, in my office and that just says, okay, these are the things that I'm trying to accomplish over the next three months. These are the daily habits that I've established are going to, are, are, are going to get me there. And I just literally check it off every day. All right, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. You know, and I know as I do that, it's gonna help get me better. Yeah. And ultimately get me across the finish line. Then from there, sometimes you have to, uh, you have to have some checkpoints, right? Sometimes, so I'll give you an example, like, um, you know, I've, uh, I don't know if you and I have talked about this, but I, me and my wife, between the two of us, we have seven kids. No, I did not know. Yeah, that. seven kids? <laughs> we have seven. Holy so smart. we've got a blended family, right? So How do you do it? Like, I it's busy. I don't, I don't want to yeah. try. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. you're good. It's, it's busy for sure. So Jesus. she had three, I had two, and we have two little ones together. Okay. So <laughs> there's a bunch of kids and um, I realized that I would sometimes, because I travel a lot for work, my kids, uh, you know, they're with their mom during the school year you know, up in Idaho and then kind of just go back and forth and I have them for most of the summer. Right. But what I found is that there will be times where I'll go weeks without seeing them. Right. And so especially my kids, but my wife's kids even, I'll go a week and a half, 10 days, 15 days sometimes without seeing them. And uh, what, I, what I saw was that there, there'd be kind of like a gap between us, right? It would kind of create some distance because we weren't really connecting very much during that time. And so one of the things that's like one of my, my daily actions that I'm do, doing right now is I have to talk to each one of the kids every day. Um, the little like ones, it's easier because they're four and one, right? Like, so they don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not so much doing with them, but the five older ones, you know, I'm, they all have phones, right? So I text them, I talk to them and I'm consistently touch. talking to them, just, touch just a touch point, right? And I, what I saw as I did that was it was working with some of them. Um, and some of them, they're just little textures, right? They just sit there and they'll text me back, you know, almost instantly for the most part. Right. Some of them didn't, right? My two kids, they're not as big textures, the ones that live with their mom in Idaho. And so what I found was that with my, uh, my, my two kids, for example, right? Like they're not big textures. Yeah. And so what, um, with them, what I did was I started either sending in like memes or gifs or things like that, right? Okay. Um, that they would like laugh or think was funny. Or I would also start sending them like those games on an iPhone, yeah. right? Where you can text in the game and you can like bowl together or whatever it is. Right. My kids love games. And so that was something that would catch their attention. Like, oh yeah, I want to beat dad, right? And so right. then we'd start playing and I'd, it'd give me an opportunity to really connect with them. Um, and so, you know, for me, like just those daily actions, right? Like finding when I'm trying to, to move the needle at some point in my life, I look for something that I know will help me to get better, right? I start doing that. I find a checkpoint along the way, uh, you know, to see if it's making working. Yeah. Let me see if it's doing something, right? right? If it's not, then I'm going to readjust and say, okay, I'm actually going to try this instead. So I've, you know, so now my, my notebook in there, it has like, you know, t text all kids, but I know which ones I'm, you know, which action I'm going with. Right. right. Am I going to just text them or am I going to, you know, send them a game? Right. Um, and then, uh, and I found that by doing that, it's helped me to create more connection with my kids and uh, you know, not have that gap the next time I see them. And stay connected, like so, yeah. So how do you so that so I so obviously with your the the people on your team, how are you using that to keep 
your managers, right? To keep them engaged with their reps, right? Totally. Like how do you, yeah, how so are they keeping, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? How, how are you able to translate that? Like what daily habits are we talking exactly. about? Exactly. So, so yeah, so like what we teach them is like, hey, these are the daily habits that you need to do, right? Like you need to, um, on every Monday, you have a new hire orientation, right? We let the manager, we give a little bit of freedom of execution for the regional managers to yeah. decide the time. Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, but you have to do new hire orientation and a new hire orientation. This is what that entails. Yeah. And in order for a rep to be trained, this is what that entails. Yeah. And in order for a rep to get out of training, they have to be able to, uh, you know, show and develop these skills. Yeah. And we have everything very listed and calculated out. Excuse me. For our recruiting process, this is the process that you bring through, bring them through every single time. These are the questions that you ask. And we just give them specific guidelines on all, on all of it. From a production standpoint, we say, hey, look, you know, when you're an infant office, this is what we expect. We want you personally to producing five pitch or six pitch leads a week, whatever it is, right? It's, it's a little bit different per office. But we give them specific metrics of what we're wanting them to accomplish. You know, we give them, you know, we have an overall forecast for the year in order for us to hit our overall forecast. This is what it breaks down to, you know, on the, the, the month, the week, the, um, the day. Um, so we have that in a, a dashboard um, that we that we, ref we reference all the time, right? It shows where you're at in, re in uh, relative to your forecast. Yeah. Um, and in order for you to hit your forecast, you have to, you know, your overall forecast will say is 50 closes a month, right? And in order to hit that, that forecast, this is how many appointments you have to set as a team. Um, and it has that just in a dashboard, you know, and then I can just hold them accountable to making sure that they're hitting their actual forecast. So there's several ways to do it, that we do it, but um, it all comes down to just finding out what the daily habits and trackers are yeah. that we can hold them accountable to. So typically for a regional, like how many doors have to be knocked for them to hit their... The doors knocked is a hard one because it doesn't get tracked. We use an app called Sales Rabbit. It doesn't always get tracked perfectly in there. Mm. But we know from an appointment standpoint how many they need, right? So typically, um, it's, it varies per region too uh, because some of them just have a little bit better conversion rates. But as an organization, typically what we look at is if they set 100 appointments, um, about 50% of those are going to pitch. Okay, so 50 like out of 100, show, they'll, we'll, make they'll show up, they'll sit down, both yeah. homeowners will be there, we can actually have the opportunity yeah. to sit down with them, right? Um, then from there, uh, company average right now I think is about 26, 27 percent of those will close. Solid. Um, overall, the number we actually look at though that's valuable to us is what we call the opportunity percentage. Mm -hmm. So out of 100 appointments, how many of those closed? Right. That's what we look at as our opportunity. And we can look at opportunity percentages from, you know, set appointment to install, there's a bunch of them, right? But that's the main one we look at. And as, typically as a company, we're sitting around 13 percent. So 13% of our overall appointment set, right. whether it pitched, it didn't pitch, that that closed. Yeah, because, so, I mean, shows yeah. and stuff like that, I mean, that could be attributed to, you know, like so many different things, sometimes marketing, sometimes appointment reminders. Like. Yeah, yeah, it can be attributed to a lot of things. And the other thing, too, is it's not always a real number. One of the guys, that uh, his name's Ethan, he owns all of our, like, uh, business intelligence stuff. Yeah. He hates the pitch number because he's like, it's not a real number, really, because sometimes it's simply just the closer was like, yeah, I'll just throw the, you know, throw our, our Solar Pro or Setter a bone, right? Because he wants him to get paid for it. Right. Um, and so it's not always a real number. So that's why we look at like the overall opportunity percentage because you can't really fake that one. Is it is it the setter's job to get them to show? To like really set? Cause they, Typically, yeah. yeah. So we give them like specific things like, you know, to firm up the appointment, this is the process you bring them through. Yeah. Um, you know, some of some offices are better than others, and some reps are better than others. When a new rep starts off, they're just excited that somebody said, "Yeah, sure, I'll meet with somebody," right? And they forget to go through that that <laughs> process. Um, and so, when someone starts off, you know, their sit percentage is probably twenty percent, right? But you know, then we just we work with them, coach them, and move them move them through to where they get to the typically, like I said, around 50, 45, 50 percent. Yeah, I mean, have you ever, as a as a company, thought of instead of doing set or closing? have somebody who can do both or has this been a company yeah so line? we actually we used to a, isn't that like a because you're like damn i'm it's like there's the pros and cons right mm -hmm. and it's like yeah. You're always looking at conversions and yeah. so you found that so the, the, the conversions are actually way higher when you have uh somebody uh do all of it right uh you, they're gonna have more appointments set more appointments close uh, because they're the one that gained the relationship from the beginning, right. right? Right. But what we saw there, so we did that previously with Evolve, 
but what we what we saw happen and and going into like into encore right like when we first started encore we uh, had a sales manager that had been in direct sales knocking doors for like like 12 years something like that just self genning he mostly was alarms moved over into solar pipe two years previous and he was just tired of knocking doors he's just like I just don't want to do it anymore and so so we'd see these great closers that were really good in the house gr- you know really great at what they did that just didn't want to do it anymore and would get out of the industry right mm. and so in order to retain that group uh, we started kind of the setter closer model there's higher turnover obviously in the in the setters and the solar pros right, right? but yeah. we um, we're able to also, we create a, a career path inside of the, the our, we call our setters solar pros. So if you keep hearing me refer to that, that's what I'm talking about. We create a career path for our solar pros because now they can come in, they can learn how to set appointments and they can move up on the solar pro side and move into a solar pro manager or regional solar pro manager and have a career path there that's not just knocking doors forever, right? Right. They're training and developing people, or they can oftentimes move over onto the closer side. Right. So there's a there's a there's a progression there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we found that we get way higher retention. So like that guy back at the beginning, right? When we were first starting, he was done knocking doors, didn't want to do it anymore. You know, the previous month to starting the solar pro program, I think he he sold two or three or something like that. And yeah. pretty low performance. The next month he closed 12. Um, so he was great inside the home. We just had to find a medium to be able to get him, get him in front of people. Um, and so we found that this is one of the better ways for us. Now that being said, right, like it's still a great way to generate appointments. And so we have, we have in a lot of offices, you know, in a lot of regions, they champion this really well. They have kind of a hybrid model where they bring somebody on, they say, hey, you have to learn how to knock doors first. You're gonna go out, you're gonna knock doors, you're gonna generate your own leads and close your own deals. Yeah. Once you've shown us that you can do that, you're still gonna do it, but you're also gonna get some appointments as well. So um, we have a mix a mix in there of that. Uh, we also have discussed just kind of starting a you know a self-gen only program. Uh, so we've got kind of both both sides. As we continue to grow, I'm sure that's something that we'll, we'll, we'll work in there. Right now is we're, we're super hyper-focused on hitting our forecast for this year. And so as we continue to scale, we know it's a channel that we'll probably start developing. Yeah, I know a lot of companies that like once they hit the 100, 110 million, they're mm-hmm. like self-gen, self-gen. Mm-hmm. Like really yeah, it's definitely more profitable for us yeah. for sure. So the setter programs are really expensive, what most people don't realize. Yeah. You know, it costs us thousands of dollars to get an install. Yeah. Um, you know, it makes us money, right? And right. We're, we, it's it's been our model and it's worked really well for us. But um, it can also be, uh, yeah, it, there's yeah. a lot of challenges with it for sure. Right, so. right. Well, cool. So, so talk me, walk me through retention. Like that's one of the, I assume, especially on your side of the yes. game. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it's it's a combination of all these things. Yeah, like all these things. So we're it's talking yeah, taking about. all the things we're talking about and yeah. throwing it into one. Right. Really get them get them bought into our culture. Like our culture is a really big thing to us. I think we, we were talking before about this, but like when we started Encore, we looked at like. You know, we, we wanted to, you know, obviously be in solar, right? But ultimately, all of us kind of wanted to be a personal development company. Yeah. And so we picked a product, right? And now you'll hear a guy I work with named Jared. You'll hear him say uh, pretty commonly, like, we're a personal development company that happens to sell solar. And so... It's pretty cool, man. Yeah. So so what we... Uh, the way that we strive to retain people, obviously, is give them the opportunity to make a, a good income, Right. Uh, income that they probably never would have had the opportunity to make, especially where most of them are sub 25 years old. Um, but also give them, you know, kind of a, a mission beyond that where uh, our brand ideal, what we call it, a lot of people will call it a mission statement, yeah. but it's expanding life. And uh, we want to help expand everybody's lives. And so we do everything we can to do that through, you know, our training program, right? Uh, that we're, we're, you know, revamping right now and redeveloping so that we, we give them the best shot at getting through the learning curve. You know, we've got the caliber program. We've got, you know, every year we do an annual trip. We call it our Encore Elite Trip, right? A lot of people call it a President's Club. Right. You know, we go to Mexico, Costa Rica, wherever it is, right? And you get an all-inclusive trip somewhere. You know, a lot of people that have been on these trips have literally never been on an airplane in their life. Um, they've never gone anywhere, right? Wow. And now they get to go to Costa Rica or where in Mexico, or wherever it is. And so um, our retention is just a mixture of everything, like making sure we train them really, really well, but then helping get them bought into the culture where, you know, you know, you've got a great culture. This is something I'll tell our managers. You've got a great culture when uh, you have people sticking around that aren't making any money. 
They're like, I just love being here. I, yeah. I love being a part of the team. Now, granted, that's in that's not helping them expand their life, right? Um, they're not they aren't getting it for whatever reason, but um, they're bought into the culture, the people, the process, what we're doing, and they believe in what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and when they've got a mission beyond just I'm here to make money, and they believe in what they're doing, then they're going to stick around longer term. I like that. Do they, Do you have? I, I've heard you say offices a couple times. But I know everyone's pretty much out. Do you have like a, does each, do you have central actual like locations yeah. mm-hmm. where people were coming in, yep. where, where your your reps come in maybe before a shift or something? Yep. And then um, do they don't, they don't really have shifts, right? They just kind of go out or do they all Yeah, we, we do organize it pretty well into like shifts, right? It's like, so hey, this guys, way they all, like you said, in the yeah, groups like, and stuff. They'll like. have two, two meetings a week, right? And they'll be at our, our local office there. So they have like office meetings. And then they'll have what we call field meetups. Typically they meet like it's usually sometimes it's the office if they're knocking closer where the office is. Other times it's like, hey, we're going to meet at a Walmart parking lot or whatever. And uh, everyone just meet right here. We'll do a quick team meetup. Make sure everybody's there. One of those, you know, group accountability pieces. And then they go to the area from there. Got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So there are our our central offices. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, listen, um, I really really glad that we had the opportunity to chat with you and i think you have an opportunity that a lot of people want right especially someone who's who's like i want to go out i want to make money i want to be a part of a uh, a team and a culture where i'm excited about to be around other people yeah group accountability Mm -hmm. um you know that's one thing that nobody talks about like obviously that's all we talk about is accountability Mm because this is what people want they truly want it um, and they just want it the right way, right? Mm-hmm. So how does somebody f- connect with you? How does someone's like, hey, I want to get into this. I want to learn more about OnCourse yeah. or I want to, you know, maybe be get a chance to go through the process. For how sure. do they, how do they yeah. find you? I mean, uh, you can always email me, Cody at OnCourseSolar.com. OnCourse spelled E-N-C-O-R. There's no E at the end. Um, you can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I think it's just Cody Show on both those, so. Um, yeah, any of those are great ways to contact me. And and would they? Would you just put that? You know, get them through like the application. Like, does it matter where they live? By the way. Yeah. So we've got specific locations that we do. We do our own installs, right? So yeah. you know, it's we can sometimes go through an installation network of people that we know that can do installs. But we've got specific office locations. You know, we're in. You want I can list all of them. We're all across the U.S. Okay, so but, yeah, uh, so you know, yeah, reach definitely out, reach out. Yeah, reach out to me, and you know, if we're there, I'd love to chat. Okay, awesome. Well, cool, man. Thank you so much for everything yeah. that you've shared. Yeah, absolutely, and, man. Uh, appreciate your time. Yep. Yep. Cool. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Next Play Podcast. If you liked the show, make sure to leave us a review. For more resources, visit relentlessuniversity.com or download the free Relentless University app. And if you're interested in having me speak at your next event, visit relentlessrichie.com. Until next time.